Just imagine if humans had gills like fish and could breathe underwater as easily as we do on land. To fathom a world where Homo sapiens evolved with gills alongside lungs, we must envision how history itself would unfurl differently. When primitive life first left the sanctuary of the seas nearly 500 million years ago, the challenges terrestrial living presented is what spurred adaptation. Lungs developed to process ample oxygen from abundant ancient forests. Legs and fins transformed to amble across surfaces rather than swim. Even bone density increased to counter gravity's relentless pull. Had prehistoric creatures retained their aquatic breathing while venturing onto land, what need would gills have served? Without environmental pressure, evolution often stalls. So for humans to extract oxygen from water, as other marine animals do, profound changes would have reverberated back on the tree of life's earliest branches. Envision an alternate reality where vegetation did not proliferate so profusely after land emergence. Perhaps periods of extinction were more severe and recovery took longer. Or volcanic eruptions and asteroid impacts left barer landscapes. With sparser sources of oxygen, retaining the safety net of gills alongside fledgling lungs would have proved advantageous. We'd probably look different too if the evolutionary cards had played out to make humans aquatic adapters. Larger lung capacity, webbed hands and feet, glow-in-the-dark skin, eyes adapted to both murky rivers and cloudless skies. The possibilities are wild. Could we have become amphibious shapeshifters, our physiology sculpted by two realms? We'd be transitioning from sea to shore as we pleased. And if Homo sapiens possessed this flexibility, how would civilizations have formed? Would we have developed oceanic infrastructure alongside urban cityscapes? Do undersea equivalents of Rome and Alexandria now erode silently in the Stygian darkness, waiting to be unearthed by a chance submarine excursion? Perhaps in this alternate version of Earth, terrains remained wild and humanity more nomadic without sprawling inland agriculture. And could you imagine the chaos of underwater cities springing up left and right? The housing market would be intense with so much potential real estate to develop. Restaurants, schools, offices, everything would be adapted for an aquatic lifestyle. But I'd like to imagine that the seas could become a domain for philosophers and researchers to uncover the origins of life in hydrothermal vents, for poets to scribe odes to the mystical creatures of the abyss they swim alongside, and for united cultures not divided by topography, but connected through a shared oceanic citizenship. Now let's get back to reality, where we can't even hold our breath longer than two minutes.